Good to see a big crowd out to a farm businesses wanting to know all about sustainability and how to embed it. Um, so thanks very much everyone for coming. Thanks to Helen and the team at Farming Connect for inviting me along as well. Um, Kevin's just um, mentioned, uh, outlined what I'll uh, be talking about. Um, I have actually changed the title of the um, of, of, my, of my short uh, uh, slot. Um, what I want to do is draw on some examples, some real life examples of um, both from a dairy and from a commercial grower business that I've worked with over the years uh, to help look at, um, to basically help them innovate and help them diversify, um, but making sure that they've achieved the success by placing sustainability at the core of what they, what they do. Hence the title on, on the screen there. I think it's about, it's very much about doing better business and sustainability is here to stay. It's, it's, it's not going away uh, particularly quick quickly. Um, I'm also going to touch very, very briefly on, um, on the policy behind this and also the market drivers, because there is a market demand behind sustainably produced, um, uh, sustainable, I should say sustainably produced goods and services, but sustainable produce fits in, into that as well. Um, yeah, and I think I want to end up then by maybe offering some um, ways forward and maybe some calls to action um, as far as how I would see Farming Connect interacting in this area in the future. And I appreciate it's the uh, I'm on the kind of the last slot of the uh, of the day, um, so it's not going to be too heavy from me. I'm actually going to use a short video, um, which will mean that you can listen to something perhaps more interesting than me rattling on for 20 minutes. Um, before I do that. Um, just a little bit about me and my company. Um, I, I'm, you know, my experience is in helping organisations put sustainability to practice. Um, we've been doing it since I set up the company in 2008, so kind of before it became the hot topic that it, it perhaps is today. And over the years, I've designed um, and delivered projects that help businesses create responsible brands, responsible products, responsible services that are basically low in environmental impact or low in negative environmental impact and high in what we call social value. So good for the planet and good for people. Um, but also good for profit as well because they have to be commercially sound to make sure businesses will want to engage on this sort of stuff. Um, and I focus mainly on food and farming supply chains in Wales and beyond over, the, over those years. So um, just to begin with an example. Um, Teat Anglois Dairy is, I don't know if anyone's uh, aware of Teat Anglois Dairy, but they're a, they're a a dairy company based uh, in Pyle, just near Bridgend. And their story begins way back um, when Rhys Lacher, he's the guy on the left-hand side of the photo there that we'll be hearing from in a moment, um, returned from agricultural college um, with big ideas and a plan to turn the family dairy farm into a dairy processor and start to sell the milk and other uh, dairy products they, they produce within the local area, so it's very much about fresh local produce. Up until then, up until that point, they've been, um, the milk that they produce, they basically work like any traditional dairy farm, they bring the cows in, they milk the cows, and then a, a, a tanker would come along and collect the milk, um, ship it off down the M4 to a, to a centralised processing unit, mix it up with every other farmer's milk, bottle it, and then arguably bring it back down the M4 and sell it through the retailers, so, you know, sold under the, the sort of Welsh milk brand. Um, and obviously, or maybe not obviously, but some of the benefits in those early days when we were looking at this with uh, Rhys and, and, and the family there was um, the significant benefits were perhaps stating the obvious, reducing food miles. Food miles is a kind of controversial statement to make, but taking tankers off the road by keeping uh, and extending the shelf life of the product because if the milk isn't moving so far, there's arguably a longer shelf life, so it reduce food waste. And perhaps more fundamentally, um, it helped the, 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 the business remain profitable. Um, I, I'm not going to quote. I'm not going to quote um, uh, uh, the, the, the price for litre they were charging back then. But it wasn't enough to kind of stay in business. It wasn't a sustainable business at all. But by processing the, their own milk and selling it, uh, uh, um, they were able to kind of stay in business. So, 15 years or so on from 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 then, um, the company's doing really well um, the, you know there's about 12 employees there working full-time uh, they win contracts to supply local schools um, as well as selling through uh, some of the big retailers 
in the, in the area, um, not a million miles away from their farm. And they're also doing doorstep deliveries of fresh milk to direct customers. So it's a very, very successful business. Um, I am hopefully going to be able to run a video now. There we are. My name is Rhys Lucker. This is Titangloist Farm. We're a family dairy farm uh, just outside Bridgen, South Wales. And back in 2005, we started pasteurising and bottling our own milk. There's significant costs involved in doing it, but you are in control of the whole supply chain then. A far more sustainable way of doing things now. We've massively reduced the carbon footprint and the food miles of our product. The big thing for me that we're most proud of is local employment that that creates by keeping things locally. And then we're supplying the local schools where our employees' own children go to. It just keeps all the money in the local economy circulating around like it was 100 years ago. Yes, yeah, so the, the main benefit is doing things our way uh, in terms of transport, at least, isn't it? We've taken, you know, if you think of our total annual production of milk on this farm, that'd be quite a few lorry loads of milk that we've taken off the roads, off the motorways. So we're reducing fuel use, we're reducing emissions, reducing traffic. The sort of the food culture here compared to, say, a country like France, there's a massive difference, isn't there? They seem to value food and provenance and freshness and seasonality a lot more than we do here. And you know, I think it'd be great if we could slowly have a bit of a cultural shift and get a bit more in tune with that. It's coming. So the the on-farm renewables we've got here is obviously great for the environment. But it's good business as well. We've got um, one big solar installation on the cowshed roof. And we've done a couple of smaller ones. Because obviously we are using a lot of electric here. So now we've got a new building up on, on the farm now. One of the key design criteria, but that wouldn't have been mentioned 15 years ago, is that we've got to orientate this building to give us a south-facing roof for solar panels. And then we've got biomass boiler as well then, which we use for uh, uh, heating then. So heating the farmhouses, the office, and uh, preheating a lot of the warm water then for the milking parlor, for the, for the washing. So our average yields here, 11,500 litres of cow. So we'd be right up there in the top few percent in the UK. They're so efficient. So when you look at, you know, we talk about methane emissions from our cows and stuff, you know, per litre of milk she's producing, she'll be far more efficient than the vast majority of cows anywhere else in the world. And we've got local forage here. That's a big part of her, her diet as well. So of our milk production on the farm here, about half would be going to commercial customers. So that would be schools, nurseries, care homes, cafes, hotels, restaurants, local ice cream makers, a local patisserie, a good wide range of commercial customers and the other half of our milk then goes direct to consumers on our, on our doorstep rounds then. And it's been great to see how they really value the sustainability and the freshness that comes with local produce. What we're seeing now is a lot of the food service guys, they're promoting us on their menus. They need to let their customers know that they're using fresh local produce. The consumers seem to respond really well to it and, and love it. So we Okay, um, so thanks to yeah, the guys at Kiwine uh, uh, for, for allowing us to use that video. And um, yeah, that was taken from some um, sustainability workshops I, I, I did with those guys a, a few years ago. But um, Reese obviously talks, well, I think Reese talks very well, and I find it sort of quite inspiring to um, listen to him and have him played a kind of small part in, in, the, in, in part of his, in, in, in his journey. And, and I think um, this slide, I've just tried to summarize. I'm not going to go over them again, but some, summarise some of the key achievements that, that Reese has talked about then. Um, uh, things like reducing emissions, resource efficiency, renewable energy, waste prevention and plastic reuse, and also things like the local economy, provenance, uh, and how sustainability is part of his businesses, their business's growth. And I'll come back to this slide in a moment because um, I want to give another example before I do um, to try and draw some uh, comparisons and pull out some common themes. Um, We've worked closely through Sarah and the guys um, on the previous uh, uh, Tiddy Cymru project through Lantra, which has now kind of arguably become part of Farming Connect. Um, and through those guys, I was introduced to um, the Derwin and the Dingle Nurseries um, with a kind of broad uh, request, I suppose, to, to, to help them look at sustainability and, and, and so help them to sort of reduce costs and perhaps better respond to their customer demand. And Jer Jerry and the team there um, already had things like solar installed. They already had, uh, they were already using peat-free compost or they were selling it in, 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 the, in the garden centre there. Um, but they're quite a big business, certainly for the Welsh Wall area where they're based. And they're twinned with sort of Dingle Nurseries, which is both, they're both sort of family-owned family 
um, organisations. Um, and they recognised that uh, on top of the stuff that they were doing, they had issues in areas such as plastic waste, such as the plants they buy in from other suppliers that, that, that may use peat in how they grow. And that obviously has a sort of carb, there's a carbon issue around that. And, and the chemicals that some of their suppliers are using as well. So whilst they were doing the best job arguably they could, some of their suppliers they had questions around. Um, and that obviously was impacting on their business model. So I guess the challenge with these guys for me really was to first to under help them understand the sort of things that they're doing now and, and sort of pull those out to look at what their current sustainability performance is and, th and then sort of look, explore with them what they could then do in the future. So what, what, their, what their future plans could could be and we approached that over a series of meetings we carried out a, a, a sort of sustainability audit um, where we looked at all aspects of the business from some of the stuff I've mentioned from 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 um, you know where they get their stuff from through to how they sell it and everything that goes on in between um, and next help them work on a, on a practical action plan and highlighted areas that are on the screen there and some of the stuff I've touched on already and their, their achievements and this is where I want to flick back to the T Tangloy slide in a moment, but the, the, their achievements include things like reducing emissions, things like going peat free, which is, which is a carbon, uh, which is, which is, which is um, lim limiting the impact of carbon, uh, renewable energy, installing renewable energy, reducing the use of chemicals and sprays, which is obviously a, a pollutant, um, li limiting transport and, 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 and increasing the use of electric vehicles. Um, waste prevention and, 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 and reusing plastic plant pots and stuff like this, um, water and, and con how they contribute to the local economy. And if I flick back very quickly to the T Tangloy slide, I know it's very similar because it's a white background and a sim similar type font, but there's commonalities there, right, between a dairy business and a commercial, a commercial grower, a horticulture company. So sustainability is across the board. It's a, it's a cross-cutting theme. So it's not just about one sector over another. And that's just a kind of key point I wanted to make. Um, those common themes are all about how businesses are putting sustainability into practice. And these things are now becoming essential requirements for businesses. Um, because one, they're practical issues facing all, in this case, farm businesses. Um, but also they make commercial sense because they either save businesses money, you reduce how much energy you use, you save money, right? Um, but it also helps create a narrative with customers that is where the market demand lies. So this is a significant and growing marketplace and that is the reason why they're doing it ultimately. They need to survive as businesses just like my business needs to survive. And I think I'm not going to dwell on the uh, legislation uh, uh, today, but I think it's, it's important to kind of note that um, sustainability is key to the, to the Welsh Government's agenda. This is where the sustainable farming scheme that's, going to, that's forthcoming is, is coming from. Sustainable land management outcomes are kind of, this is almost like the ingredients of the sustainable farming scheme. And if you look at some of these, um, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, um, Resource, resource efficient, um, clean water, clean air. These are the sort of things that Reese at Tea Tangloist Dairy and Jerry at the Derwin and Dingle Nurseries are acting upon right now. So that it's not about, they don't have to change what they do to meet the criteria of the sustainable farming scheme. They need to build on it. And that's, so it's not like, it's not a big change. It's actually just good business practice. And that, that's kind of what this, where this all comes from. Um, and I can't move on without talking about net zero. Um, and I'm going to, very, very quickly mention it because it's, it's very topical uh, as I was listening to the uh, news last night and, and today on the way up in the, in the car. But just to sort of point out that um, th this is the legislation that exists. Um, it's the backdrop to, I guess the backdrop of it all is about climate change. This is where it all stems from or the combined nature crisis and, and climate crisis that, that, we're, that we're facing. And, and this is kind of alerted international governments to make, to set targets for net zero by the year 2050. I'm not going to read it out, but you can see on the screen that that's a, a staged approach to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And businesses need to take part in that, and farm businesses particularly, because as you can see on the screen there, you know, according to the statistics, farm businesses contribute, farmers contribute, farming I should say, contributes around 12% to um, of Wales emissions. So it's a kind of sizable chunk 
uh, uh, of Wales's environmental impact, and that's why uh, farmers are being uh, a challenge with this stuff. But it isn't just about meeting legislation and doing what Welsh Government wants businesses to do. Um, there is kind of a, a significant and growing market demand for sustainable produce, as I mentioned earlier. And I've just put a couple of, of, of um, quotes on the screen there um, to sort of underline that, really. It's grown. The, 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 the increase in consumer demand, for example, has grown in ethical uh, uh, consumers, ha has grown fourfold since 1999, worth 41.1 billion in 2019. So it's a significant uh, marketplace and it's a growing marketplace. It's what customers want to see. It's what trade buyers want to see. So if you're selling direct to cons consumers, that's the sort of stuff that, that that's, this is the sort of stuff they're asking for. If you're selling into the, tr into the supply chain, they're also looking at these sort of issues. And this is some research we did a little while ago, which was looking at the likes of Tesco, the likes of Morrisons, the likes of these big retailers and also the big manufacturers and the kind of things they're looking at for the, in terms of how they then will go out and seek out suppliers to help them meet their corporate agendas. So things like environment and resource use, responsible sourcing, provenance and supporting communities. These are all things that Reset Heat Angloist Dairy and Jerry at the Derwin and the Dingle are actively doing. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's kind of there. Um, have, have I got time? Two minutes, okay. So I'm just gonna rattle through these last few slides very quickly. Uh, really a sort of call to action. Some work that um, we were doing with uh, Sarah and the previous Tivy Cymru project with, with horticulture, with commercial growers, was, was uh, involved getting an industry group together of key growers, right? So there's, some, there's, a, there's a number of quite sizable businesses uh, across Wales and getting them together to discuss these issues, discuss the challenges that they face, um, was a, is a very good mechanism for getting them to kind of uh, embrace sustainability and, and, and implement sustainability. And on the back of that, we, had, we basically had a, had a series of meetings where we bring the guys together, we discuss the topics of the day, and we also develop resources in and around the issues that I've highlighted in green on the slide there, reducing plastic waste, water management, the stuff I've been talking about throughout the, the, the talk today. So making sense out of sustainability and helping them putting it into place. And that's kind of quite a, that was kind of quite a powerful uh, route forward uh, uh, um, um, for the commercial growers. And I think this needs to be expanded across uh, all farming, because like I say, it's not, uh, it's, it's not specific or exclusively for horticulture, is it? The sustainability, it's across the board and we need to act. The last slide before I close and pass over to Kevin, just to uh, raise awareness um, really of um, a self-assessment tool that uh, we developed. It's a, it's a free online tool that, it's for food and drink businesses, right? But um, any farmers that are, farm businesses that are working beyond uh, just the farm gate, it might be a useful thing to look at to uh, both benchmark your sustainability, learn about kind of any, any gaps you might have in terms of and practical actions you might be able to take. Um, it kicks out a report and gives you a score for sustainability um, by completing that in, about, in around about 20 minutes. And it also is useful because it informs Welsh Government policy, so we're getting some good evidence from this. The data that it collects is, is, is firing back evidence to Welsh Government to help them direct their policy decisions around this agenda. So if, if, if we're finding that there's gaps in terms of skills, in terms of knowledge, we can then help direct uh, uh, Welsh Government funding towards that sort of stuff. That's me, Donna. Thanks. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, thanks for listening to me. I'm, I'm here. Thanks.